All right, we'll call the uh, February 7th select board meeting to order. Uh, we got Flo Smith, Brad Town, John Quinn, Dave Sawyer, all here. Any additions or changes, Vince, to the agenda? No, nope, just a reminder that since we haven't had any in a bit is the uh, liquor licenses, and we'll cover those on the 630, 640 approval of licenses, permits, and vouchers. Okay. Just to get those approved. Rosemary gave me today, so. Excellent. Um, any public comment? Hearing, uh, hearing none. Uh, Marvin Road discussion. So, would you? Yeah, I, I can kick it off with just a brief. Uh, I thought uh, Mr. Noyes was going to attend tonight. Um, we, uh, we've we had a number of issues up there with regards to plowing, as you know. Uh, he came to one meeting as well, and when we did a site visit after that. Um, we've had a, a summarize. We had a bit of a back and forth exchange and emails that you guys were in copy of as well. Um, I got, I got a hold of Justin and said, I think, you know, we need to get together. We need to figure this out. It's been going on for a long time. He's clearly really frustrated um, for all kinds of reasons. Um, and we need to figure it out and come to a solution to stop this. It's been going on for a number of years, apparently. So um, Justin uh, and I and, and Tim uh, went up and did a site visit. Justin had a good conversation with him. And I'll let Justin speak from there as to... Uh, yeah, where we're we going from there, right? Yeah, so I think everything looks good up there. We've been plowing up there. There's been issues with turning around. Uh, years ago, we built a turnaround spot up there, um, and I don't know. Seems like seems like the boundaries get moved, and there wasn't real clear definition on what he could do, what we could do, where we were going to move snow, and things like that. So. But I think we came to a good understanding. One of the options, I don't know if you want to explain them, but one of the options was to extend a little piece of uh, our turnaround spot so we can plow into it. Uh, yeah, we'll extend it. I don't know. I think we didn't really agree on a footage, but twice the size. Double, double the size. If we double the size of it, it'll be 60 feet deep because um, it's roughly between 25 and 30 now. And then um, we wouldn't put a fence on the back of it to be able to push snow out of it. Well, no, we'd, we'd have a fence on the back of it. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. That's that why we were making it deeper yeah, so that it wouldn't alter yeah. it and then it wouldn't be maintenance. So, yeah. Um, hey, we're just talking about you. Oh, boy. <laughs> They're still working down. So the it's all back. <laughs> They're still working on what? It's kind of tracker spine made it impossible to get Oh, I know. Here. Yeah. So, um, what we were talking about was a couple of different, well, we haven't talked about another option yet, but we talked about if we were going to do it, maybe having that thing about twice the size, the turnaround, as we discussed, um, so that we can push the snow back and it takes all that off from your plate so there's no confusion. I think the thing with the town, with us, is there's been, I don't know, I haven't been on the board long enough to know all the back history or whatever, but from my perspective, what I'm seeing is it's just not, we need some like clear definition on how, how we're going to move forward and maintain up there. And so I think for us to turn around up, it would be good if we could turn around and have that snow moved out of the way um, and we'll push it back. Yeah. So roughly remember how we talked where you pull in, we could push in right there. I don't know. We have a draw. Let's draw something. You remember? I'm not sure. Yeah, I am. Oh, okay. What are your oh. thoughts on that? I mean, you had some time to think it over at this point. So, <laughs> so if you're asking me if I want to give up more land, the answer is no. Right. I. That's my least favorite option. Okay. Because you know the the town is the are the former town uh, crew are the ones that chose that spot. I reluctantly gave up that pasture. That area, yeah, you know, just to make it easier for the town, and 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 now I'm learning they need more. It's like okay, and this is like this is the ongoing thing. I, so that's where okay, I hope, hold on. How much more hold blood on. you need? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. let me just. I want to just. I think the problem is, and that's where I, I'm saying the confusion kind of comes in. Is we we would be fine if that space was always clear and never had anything in it, that space would be just absolutely fine. If we could go up there and there was no snow in it, 
Um, and we didn't have to push anything. We could go past, turn around, be wide open. There's plenty of room as it sits. And where we're running into issues up there, if we're relying on you because you've been the one with the fence there and all that with your tractor moving the snow or, or things like that. We're running into issues if it's not clear, if we go up in the summer. I'm not sure about all of it. Um, but I know there were some pictures with like hay bales and all that in there. And I don't know if that caused some turnaround issues, but it's just not always clear. So, so I, my thought was it would be a good compromise if you wanted us to be able to go up there and easily, easily do it, not worry about damaging any property. And we put fill in there and make it so it was the same as the rest of it. So it wouldn't be any maintenance. And in the summer, you could probably have the back half to put stuff in just, just fine. Um, so it would actually create some more usable space for some of the storage that I've seen in the pictures. And I think that the problem is when we go up there in the winter, if it's not always clear, it causes an issue. So that would eliminate that. And yeah, it's probably not the best option that it's not really giving up your land. It's letting us use it for a turnaround and I would improving it. I mean, it's not much pasture there. I don't know what, what, the, what kind of feed that provides, but, um, that, that was my thought. I just think that's where the confusion is right there is just like having that clear and having the clear spot that's all and if your tractor breaks down or it's not running and we go into which happens no um <laughs> um you know for the last however many years up until you know a couple of years ago there was no turnaround and they were able to there were no problems for a long time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was problems in the beginning. And then there were like, when Eddie was doing it, it was never had a problem. You know what I mean? And then yeah. now we're back to it again. Well, you I, know, I mean, I mean, what would you do if there was no turnaround there that, you know, I allowed the town to use? Well, we wouldn't necessarily maintain up to there. If we, I mean, if we couldn't, didn't have a turnaround spot, we probably wouldn't maintain it. I mean, there's there's areas where you can do that according to statute, um, and if it's unsafe or it's not accessible, then then you have the ability to do that. That's the issue. Um, so, I do believe that you know that would be a consideration if we couldn't if we did couldn't turn around. Unfortunately, um, but that's not what anybody wants to do. That's not what you know. Uh, so we need to find some media. Like, we need to make it work. Uh, you obviously said that's your least favorite. Did you have other suggestions? Do it the way they've been doing it for, you know, the last 50 years. <laughs> well, the problem is it's not always clear. That's my understanding of it. I'll, I'll speak to that. I don't know if you have anything you want to add to that or not. But I'll add to it and Vince can add to it as well. I mean, when we met down there this fall, I asked you – not to put snow on the corner of the your driveway in the road so when he backed around the pile wouldn't hit the pile it's in the letter i'm pretty sure that it was not in, in there the letter. didn't put it in there and, so that, and, I, and I don't remember that tim here's what i think we got to do to move past this and we can either choose yeah. to do it or not we just need to figure out a way to make it work for everybody yeah. it's pretty simple um because we, I, I, I've seen the email exchange. I think we can go back and forth forever on this. But the reality is that's we want to be able to plow up there for you. We want to be able to continue to maintain it. I want to make it so that this is done. Or you know, there's going to be a transition in the board over the next month. So I want to get this handled before before that happens for you guys. So you know, one of the things was that we had talked about with, and it was really the best thing for. I, I really think it's, I, I don't see a downside to it other than, yeah, you lose a bit of pasture, um, but you gain, you gain some better land to use in the summer, I think, for storing stuff and it keeps everything out of the way. So, you know, that was my hope was that we'd be able to compromise and, and do that so that we could. You know, I don't want to do anything that's going to jeopardize not having it plowed for my, you know, my, my friends here, but like, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. If Here's my biggest fear. We do this and then you, we come back in uh, another year and, hey, Mike, this isn't working. We got to do this because this is what's been going on. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think, I think that's my biggest fear. Like I, I can give up, you know, a little area the size of this room. I'm not. There's plenty of room that stuff can eat. 
I'm just worried that, you know, it, it just keeps happening, man. You know, like they come up and they, they chop the tree down. Like, really, man? Like, you know, no, it, no, it's on the town right away there. It was my land, you know, and then they come up and do it. Never called, never did anything. Like, this is my fear. Like, when, what is enough? Like, you know? So here's do you understand, do you understand I, no, my, my I, concern? Absolutely. And I, I would probably feel the same way. Yeah. Um, I think I can see a bunch of different perspectives here. And if I were you, I'd feel the same way, I'm sure. I, I don't doubt it at all. Um, so that's why what I'm trying to do is just simply mediate or not mediate, but just get something. You know, you're going to have the minutes from this meeting, you know, that'll be recorded. That'll be something that's documentation for you. Um, so when we record the minutes from this meeting, it'll have all that. If we come to some sort of an agreement, we'll we'll we'll, we'll have all that. You know, just mark this date in your calendar. And if I, ever... I also have an agreement here that wasn't followed. Like, well, I don't know. I don't know what was not followed. What was what's followed. Something that wasn't followed. It's agreed that this would be a trial period, and if either party has issues, we would move forward and meet again on site. That happened after 14 emails were exchanged, you know, yeah. um, like <laughs> but what, what was on there? What no, the I just said it but as, as I explained, trying to explain before we were up there with, with Justin, the, the reason that was that way was because I could sense the, the frustration of exactly this. Right. It's been going on for a long time and I wanted to get all the players around the table have the discussion and then come to a final resolution that everybody can live by without going back and forth any, anymore. Right. So I wanted to get all the concerns flushed out, which I think we did. I think so. You know, mm -hmm. and, and now it's it's time to just figure out a solution so we don't keep going back and forth and we, and you don't have the concerns going forward that something else is going to change later. You know, we just got to get up there, plow safely, make it clean for you guys and, and get out of there without damaging and working around anything. So I, that's, I think there's been an accountability issue or whatever. There's no, you can't just say, well, okay, well, this is what we're supposed to be doing. You know, when, even when you look at that, if, and then, you know, circumstances happen, you know, like if the tractor, your tractor breaks down and you can't move the snow out of there. Well, then yeah, that happens, but rely on you to that shouldn't happen. So that's, that's a solution that works. That's where the town knows their role and we can do it. And that's, you know, the bottom line. So, and I think that's the best thing for you, for the home, for you guys, you know, uh, that was, I mean, I got, I'm sure you got better stuff you could do with your time. Yeah. <laughs> I have a simple question. Why couldn't they use a one ton truck instead of using a big That's what I dump truck? So we're going to buy a seventy to $80,000 truck. We don't own one already? Nope. The town's going to have a little dump truck? Nope. No. So we have a smaller, small, we have a little bit smaller one. That's but a small truck. Yeah. That has its own route. It's four hours long. Yeah, so all the trucks have routes and right. logistically, I think it's logistics more than anything. Yeah. More than anything else. We haven't grown to that capacity to have right. we have four guys, we have four routes. Right. Yep. And they're four hour routes. So yeah. Oh, yeah. um you know. so um if 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 we're gonna do this, um, because you know, I, I paid to have Wade come up and pound those uh posts in the ground so they would be really sturdy so nobody would knock them over well now they're in the ground i'm going to need some equipment to because i don't have a 43 horse tractor ain't going to pull those things out so um you know i built that again at expense to my i just don't want to keep throwing money at this thing and right. time and time that's the biggest thing for me is my time you know like if if we're gonna if I I'll I'll say okay to this if it's done in a you know a way that's going to work for everybody. So have to talk I think we can figure that out like as a you know the, the ideal and the idea behind extending that now is for the plow to come up and push the snow to the back of it, back out around and up and go out. So it doesn't have to push it past anything. It doesn't push it out. So that basically that back half of that yeah, will I, just be snow build up in the yeah, winter. Yeah, we we made that clear. That's the intent the other day to give them the space to put that so snow back there. I don't know as far as pulling those things or what we have. Well, we can help, but we'll, we can figure it out. But yeah, it wouldn't be Next anything going to happen this winter. No, it's going to happen. We're up there as far as 
you know, I mean, if we if we are going to extend it and everything else, we're going to have the excavator there. We can yeah. work with him, put the fence back up, and and reset the posts and and do it all with a piece of machinery right there. It isn't yeah. necessarily that he needs to pay somebody to come do it. Right. If we're going to do mm-hmm. this, we're all going to okay. be there. Yeah, it's with the equipment. So uh, we've okay. got the excavator. It's the benefit of. Okay. That. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I just want it pretty clear, as clear as we can get it for everybody. And we can sit down the two or three or however many and design exactly what you think you're going to need to do that. Can we have that ready for the next meeting and have it on the agenda and just finalize it? Well, I mean, is that something that we may want to wait till spring? I, I, I think we can we can kind of get a rough idea, rough it out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, I, you weren't quite here yet. I think you were coming in the door when we were talking about it. You know what I mean? It's roughly like off 60 feet. Yeah. yeah. So, so what, it, double, is, double what, what it is now is it's sure. between 25 and 30 feet, roughly, judging by, you know what I mean? The sections of fence are eight foot. There's three sections there, and there's four or five feet to the, you know, edge of the snowbank, not necessarily. You know, that's not necessarily the side of the road because he's not pushing snow all the way out there with the fence. But so another 20, 25 feet past where the fence is now. You know what I mean? And then, like Justin said, you know what I mean? In summertime to measure and stake it out. We'll just summertime. Get a, get a rough yeah, idea. We, so we can we can have something before the next meeting at least. Oh, well, I don't process. I don't know if you guys don't want it, that's fine. But I'm, I'm just trying to make you want to do it. Here, and I just I want to get it resolved as well. So yeah, the weather's fairly decent this week. What's that? I said the weather's fairly decent this week. You can yeah. just go down with a couple of tapes and you know. Yeah, I think what it, we got to do. I think it would be that's good. acceptable to you as well. We'll come up. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I think it's going to be hard to tell the because it drops off there. You know, there's a there's a, I don't know, a sway on or whatever. And and I think we could actually use that to our advantage, you know, pushing snow in there. But we'll f- I'm not worried about figuring it out. Again, I just want to make it very clear. I just don't want this to come back and say, well, you know what? Well, now, we now got a 60-foot truck that we need to use. And, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, to me, this is the, the solution that absolutely just wipes it all off the table um, and makes it so that it's never going to come back and be an issue um, as far as like the snow removal and turning around. Because yours is the only one that we we don't maintain per se. Everywhere else we plow around. Oh, you guys are more than welcome to maintain it. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> that's, what we're, saying, that's like, what we're trying to do. Yeah. Every, <laughs> right. But we can't push snow out the back of it. And right. you saw the other day we were down there with the truck with the truck in there now if the plow's almost halfway across the road sticking out there so yeah by the time you start pushing snow in there you know what i mean after this storm we're gonna have to start going around with loader cleaning out our turnarounds because some of them you can only push it so far because there's a bank or you know yeah so i think it'll it'll be the best solution um because with that eliminates us from damaging those i mean if, i mean if now if, if something were to happen and we did that and we hit your fence turning around back there it's definitely on us <laughs> you know what i mean like there's no you know no if it, there's no way around it that we'd have plenty of room i think so and, and then like you said you know what i mean then he could back out of there back up past your driveway and take the snow down with him and probably be cleaner in front of your driveway it'll be a lot better that way you wouldn't have the feather out above the driveway by the calf iron. Yeah. Following uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll, 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 um, we'll measure it out and figure it out. But yeah, we'll have it. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever we come up with, that's, that's it, man. That's, that's what we're yeah. trying for. Are we good? Yeah. Absolutely. We couldn't agree more. That's what I just want. I don't want anybody else to feel frustrated over it. So, perfect. So, what we'll do is we will uh, we'll, we'll get up there sometime in the next few weeks before the meeting, and then we'll get up this week. I'll call them tomorrow. We'll set up a time to get up there and, and we'll, look at it, and we'll bring it back. I'll bring something back at the next meeting. Yeah, and then we'll have it on there, and we'll discuss it, and we'll uh, 
make the plan from there so that it's you know steady and permanent. Make sense? Yep. It does. Awesome. Anything else you need from us before we move on to the next item? So perfect. Thank you for Thank coming you. in. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for coming up to the no problem. Appreciate no problem. We'll see you again this week. <laughs> <laughs> You guys got better things to do. <laughs> All right. All right. So next, thank you. Next up, we have the uh, audit uh, review and for approval. Yeah. We have uh, Ms. Mullen. Yeah. Online. Yep, she's online. Okay. I'm here. Hi, Linda. Hello. Here it is. So if you want to follow along with her, okay? Oh, oh boy. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Linda. Hi, Linda. Hi, Linda. Are you ready for me? Ready as we're ever going to be. Okay. So the audit was clean this year, no findings. Um, the general fund ended the year with a fund balance of $2,134,000, uh, which is an increase of $554,000 for the year even though you budgeted a deficit to try and use some of your fund balance, um, you ended up with a profit. Um, of that 2,134,000 general fund balance, um, 1,344,000 of that is unassigned. So it can be used for future budgets. Hmm. <laughs> So, as I said, you budgeted a deficit this year of 101,000 and you ended up with a profit of 554,000. Um, so that was 655,000 better than budget. Um, a lot of that, um, some of that was a loan that you received that wasn't budgeted for. That was 247,000. Greater. Uh, the, the highway budget was under budget by 132,000, mostly due to like wages in the wintertime, salt, paving and fuel expenses all came in under budget. Um, the police was under budget by 38,000, mostly due to wages and employee benefits. Um, and then just the general, general government was pretty close to budget. It was under budget by about 3,000. And then there was some capital outlays for the highway that was over budget by 102,000. The <clears throat> water pollution fund ended the year with a $2.3 million budget of which 1.7 million is unrestricted. And the water division fund ended up with a fund balance of 1.6 million. And that actually has a negative unrestricted um, once you factor out the capital assets and the debt that are on there. Um, the water pollution fund ended the year with a fund balance increase of 368,000 and the water division had a loss of 60,000. That's pretty typical and that's usually due to the depreciation which is about 150 grand a year. Um, back up here. So in the general fund, <clears throat> I mentioned that there was um, 1.3 million of unassigned, but there is several things that were being committed, like the bridges and the culverts, funds are committed for that. There's money set aside that is for reappraisal, list for education, records re restorations and things like that. So that's part of fund balance that is not able to be used for future budget budgets. Um, there was no findings this year. There was no issues with management. Um, we had a few journal entries, but none of them were material adjusting entries. The town spent more than 750,000 in federal dollars this year. So it was required to have a single audit. Um, no findings on that as well. 
that's it, unless you have some questions for me. What was the, there was a restricted fund balance that we couldn't use, can you go over that again? Yes, on page 39 of the audit, summarizes what the fund balance is restricted for. Okay. And then also what's committed and what's assigned. That's very helpful, Linda. Hmm. Perfect. Hmm. Anything else? I don't have any additional questions. Thank you for all your efforts. So you, you do need to, for the minutes purposes. Yeah, we need to approve it. Yeah. yeah. Does anybody else? John, Brad, Dave, you got any questions? Any anything? No, I'm all good. All right. Sounds pretty good to me. Yeah. Just waiting for somebody to make a motion. I make the motion to approve the audit review by Linda Mullen as presented to us this evening. Uh, second it. Any discussion? In favor, say aye. 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 Motion, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. And thank All you, right. Diane. And I'll get that finalized once I get the signed <coughs> rep letter back from you folks. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So before you go on to the next agenda item, I just have to make a, a comment on the correction there. It's a typo error on my part. It should say rec commission, rec committee and conservation commission request for funds on the next item. So there was a change. It's not a change. It's an omission on someone's part. It was yeah. five fingers. Typing. All right, next up on the agenda is the Recreation Committee and the Conservation <laughs> Committee uh, for requests uh, for use of funds. Right. We have both Tim Shea from the Rec Committee and Wendy Limbles from the Conservation Commission online. Hey, Just welcome. Hello. Hello. How's everybody doing? Good. You also have the letter in your package. Mm -hmm. Is this one right behind you, Jennifer? Oh, this is, this I can uh, go ahead. I can go for the rec committee if that works. Um, yeah, I won't. I won't be. I won't be taking all your reserve funds. Uh, but we are looking for uh, uh, about five hundred dollars. The rec committee wants to uh, start up a pickup broom ball, and would like to buy the equipment uh, on behalf of the community. And then the rec members would manage that uh, equipment and host the events on our ice rinks and just. Most people don't have uh, broom ball equipment, so we thought we would uh, look to acquire it and uh, offer that up uh, for a pickup broom ball at our facility. What's that? So that was that was new. I didn't catch that on the agenda, but okay. So we got pickup broom ball, five hundred bucks. What yeah. else? So, so before we move on. If, if the, this is multiple parts, we should take up this part first. I'd yeah. make the motion to approve $500 uh, spending for the Recreation Committee to buy broom balls. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion aye. carries. Motion carries. Next item. Anything else from the Rec Committee? When do we take the next one, please? All nope, right. I'm good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Let's Thank hear you. from the let's hear from the conservation committee. What are you going to present initially? Good evening. Good hey, evening. how's it going? When do you want me to start? Yeah, why don't you start and then I'll finish up. Okay. Um, I'm going to speak a little bit uh, very quickly uh, about the Berlin Pond Watershed Association. It's a, a nonprofit uh, approved by the state of Vermont whose mission is to protect habitat, scenic resources, recreation, and natural areas in the, in the Berlin Pond watershed. And uh, it was formed um, recently to start a fundraising effort to preserve uh, 33 acres of uh, the so-called Crandall Farm. 
Um, and I, I don't need to go into it because I think uh, the select board gave us a letter of support uh, for the acquisition of that land um, uh, maybe a month ago. Um, so now we're back and, uh, and uh, we'd like to request, uh, while the Berlin Pond Watershed Association has been doing this fundraising and it's a uh, $294,000 project, kind of a complicated project, but uh, roughly $300,000 plus some indirect surveying and, uh, and appraisals and so forth. And we're requesting to use $15,000 from the town conservation fund. Um, we have applied for a VHCB, Vermont Housing Conservation Board grant um, we applied for a grant of about $200,000. Uh, we may not get that much, um, but we, in that grant application, we put $15,000 in that budget um, as part of this complex budget that would come from the town of Berlin's conservation fund. Town of Berlin's conservation fund presently has a uh, balance of $49,000 and if, uh, if you look at the criteria of the fund, um, I think this project fits perfectly. And uh, the, the, the conservation fund um, requires the uh, conservation commission and the recreation uh, board to make a recommendation to the select board for the use of the fund. So that's, that's where we are today. And I think Wendy will speak for the conservation uh, commission. And um, I believe that you have a letter that is from the Conservation Commission um, approving or saying that we approve um, the use of these funds. We had a meeting, we looked over um, the project, we looked over the criteria um, to use this um, conservation fund, which is dedicated to this type of a project um, for conserving land in um, Berlin, specifically in the watershed is you know an area of concern um and we discussed it and the committee voted unanimously to support the use of the fifteen thousand and put it towards um the berlin pond watershed association project of the crandall farm okay. any questions as far as the conservation commission goes anybody Yes, I just had one, Justin. Uh, it's Dave Sawyer. I just, in reading the uh, the letter that I read, I just wanted to make sure that that fifteen thousand, the way I understood it to be, is for the deposit and closing cost. It wouldn't be for any of the the uh, fundraising efforts, would it? Uh, no, the thirteen thousand dollars of the fifteen thousand goes toward the purchase price, and then two thousand. Um, goes toward the um, uh, survey and appraisals for a total of 15000 Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, I'm a little confused about how this, how this is going to work. So at the, last, at the last meeting, we approved with a letter of support for this project. There was no mention of us uh, approving funds for this. It was sold as privately funded with, with, a, with a grant application to, I can't remember the... Vermont Housing Conservation yeah. or whatever. Um, and so now we're being asked to give some money towards the purchase price, but it was my understanding that there are two different private groups that are buying this property, not necessarily a nonprofit watershed group. So is it the watershed group that's actually paying for this? Or is it private entities that are paying for this, hoping being reimbursed through a grant at the state level? Well, so, so the, the crux of the question is, are we giving money to private landowners that are hoping to get money back from a state grant that will then turn the property over to the watershed? The way 
the way it works, John, is that the property had originally went on the market. It had four lots. And um, there, there were, on uh, each of the lots, um, there was a right of first refusal for some of the family members. They had, they had a buyer. The realtor had a buyer for two of the lots. And, um, and prior to the expiration of the right of first refusal, um, we had a conservation buyer, two conservation buyers that stepped in and, and exercised the right of first refusal um, in order to hold the land in time for uh, funds to be raised in order to protect the land from development. So, um, so I guess uh, to answer your question, um, Two of the lots uh, were purchased by a conservation buyer, by two different conservation buyers in order to preclude the closing to a private buyer and uh, to hold the property until they could then sell it to, um, with proper easements um, to protect the land. That help? I think so. I, I, I'm just <laughs> bear with me for a minute, Tom. So, yeah. so the conservation buyers are private, are private citizens that are buying in hopes to conserve it as part of the watershed, if they can be reimbursed from the state grant, or are they turning it over either way? They they don't they don't want to hold the land. In fact, uh, at least one of the buyers uh, has told us that they can't hold it. They'll they'll sell it again for uh, residential um, uses if we can't come through and uh, purchase it to protect it uh, with the with the proper easements. Okay, so so am I am I right in the way I'm thinking about this? So we're potentially by paying for part of a land that someone could say okay i'm going to turn around and sell this for residential development now because the the loan didn't work out or the grant didn't work out or am i thinking about it wrong no if if for any reason um the project doesn't go through and we don't protect the land for um uh, for conservation then the money would be returned to the town's conservation fund Okay. That's actually a condition in the conservation fund rules. Okay. All right. Uh, that's helpful. Thank you. Anything? Anybody else have any questions, comments? So I, I guess my only other question was, was around the, the first part of my statement of two weeks ago, during our last meeting, we were asked for a letter of support with no mention of asking right. for funds. And so now we're asking for funds. If the grant doesn't come out to the full amount, is the conservation board potentially going to come back and ask for more funds to ensure the project goes through? No, there's no plans for that. There's a, there's a number of different sources. In fact, uh, I think, let's see, I think John Quinn and um, Justin Lawrence and Vince, um, <laughs> anybody in the Berlin Pond watershed, either in the town of Berlin and Northfield, letters were sent out yesterday for the initiation of a private fundraising effort. So you'll, you'll be getting okay. a letter. So there, there's, a lot of different, there's a lot of different parts uh, uh, to this budget. But, I, gotcha. uh, I, I do, okay. do want to comment that the last time I was here and asked for the letter of support, um, if there's a recording, um, I think I did say I'll be back. <laughs> Sneaky. Uh, <laughs> have you entered? Have you entered into any sort of formal contract with with the people? I'm sorry. Have you have you done, have you signed like any sort of purchase and sales agreement or any any conditions or have you signed anything yet? 
there's there's three lots. Uh, one of the lots, uh, the city has a uh, purchase and sales agreement with the seller. The city of Montpelier does. Um, on the lower lot, uh, the um, the um, purchase and sales agreement has to be either a purchase and sales agreement or a letter of intent. I'm not completely clear what the Vermont Housing Conservation Board is going to require, but whatever their requirement is as part of the grant, that either letter of intent or purchase and sales agreement will be executed prior to the uh, prior to the awarding of the grant. But it oh, has, no. has, has not been yet, done yet. I was just wondering like if the board would want to see any contract language at some point, obviously before too much further. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I think this is a inappropriate use of the money and I think it's a, a good use. I just want to make sure we're protected if, you know, we're, we're aligning things. And as we've seen with uh, the um, town center stuff, things don't always go the way they think they're going to, right? So I just want to make sure we're protected financially, um, that we're not just giving money away accidentally um, and that we have all of our ducks in a row. But it sounds like uh, things are aligned fairly well. So thank you, Tom. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you. Anything else? We moving on or are we making a motion? Okay. Um, so I guess we'll, we'll have to bring this up at the next meeting or something. We'll put it back on the agenda. Um, sounds like nobody's making a motion for us tonight. I'd make the motion to take and uh, appropriate the funds for the conservation committee to buy the uh, help purchase the land. Is there a second? I'll second it. Any discussion? Um, do I, are we going to pull that money out of the fund balance, maybe? Looks like on the reserves or the reserves, rather. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. I, I, I guess I need a little bit more information so I understand what that what that means, Diane. Just just so I'm I'm a little fuzzy in my head about. Okay. So the conservation committee has Is it a bank 000? account with X amount of dollars in it, and then you're talking about the fund reserve. So just just for everyone in the viewing audience and to make sure I'm clear, can you explain? Yeah, because it's everything for the Conservation Commission is in the reserve. And right now we have 48,633.42 in the reserve. So if they were to use 15,000, it would come out of that 48,633. Right, which is which is what I think um, Mr. Willard, Willard has asked for, right? Right. That's my ears. That's the way I'm understanding okay. it. Okay. So, so Justin, when, when yeah. you said to take it out of fund balance, is that something different in your mind or is that the same? No, I think we're good. There's a lot. Okay. Yeah. The restricted, it's coming out of yeah, the restricted. Yeah. Not reserved. restricted, but yeah. Reserved. Yep. Okay. Any other discussion? Was that your intent with the motion, Brad? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Those, yeah. Good. <laughs> Those in favor? Say aye. 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 All right. All right. Motion carries. Thank you, guys. Thank you all. Thank you. Um, we have uh, appointment to the Conservation Commission request for approval. Is that Ellen? Yeah. I don't see the witness tonight either. Documents. Document is also in there as well. I've been on the commission now for for some time and asked to continue on in your role. I make the motion to reappoint Ellen Sulik to the Berlin Conservation Commission for another term. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next up, we got a public works board briefing, new position. Tom, it looks like you're on. 
Not Tom's not with us. Oh, I thought I saw, but I thought I saw Tom, but I was okay. down there. All right. So uh, the, the chair of the public works couldn't be with us. He wanted to pass that on, and he's sorry he couldn't attend. Um, but they did draft. I don't know if you all had time to review that or not. Uh, hopefully you have uh, to some extent what the uh, the job title, the, the descriptions, the duties and responsibilities of that position and the qualifications that they'll be looking for to fill that position. One of the things that um, he's rec that the Public Works Board is recommending that this be the start of the first person uh, for a public works department. Uh, that's why they're putting it at the supervisor level. This position will also replace uh, the two consultants uh, that we currently have that are filling that role at the present time. How much do we spend on those consultants? We spend uh, just on the contracts. It doesn't include any repairs um, or work that's done. We spend about $88,000, a little over $88,000. It's uh, 53,676 for Mr. Mercier, and the contract with Simons is 34,680. Which, again, as as I said and confirmed with Diana, does not include any repairs that they get paid above so, and beyond that for. So what does that yeah. what does that actually cover? Just so we're clear. Right. On call. Being on call the, um, with Simon's, it does include um, reading uh, meetings. meter readings. Yeah, I and mean, they still charge us a little bit separate for that. So we we pay that much just for on call. That's all they do. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. We, I've never... get, we get charged additional work yeah, if, if they have to come in and do uh, repair. repairs yeah. and work. Both of them. Yeah. We pay above and beyond that based on their contract. Yep. So, so I have some I have some questions based on what you just said. Okay. Seems like a good contract. <laughs> for the other. All right. <laughs> so it seems like it seems like we have two two completely different paths here, right? Like one is a daytime job of meter reading, right? The other could potentially be on call after hours, break fix, nights and weekends, which we would still be on the hook for. Even if we even if we got someone. So what's the so we spend eighty eight thousand between the two of those positions. So if you look at just the after hours slash break fix, which can potentially be after hours, how much of that is in that piece? I guess I'm trying to figure out, like, are we still going to have that piece afterwards, potentially, if we hire a new employee to start a public works department? It sounds to me like we need to look at that. We need to look at the contracts, too. Right. Because where you know, to me, it's on call. I'm sure there's more to it. However, if somebody does have to go nights or weekends, there's additional fees that right. both of them we pay to. Uh, if there's repairs, we pay for the repairs and we pay for the time for that person to do the repairs. It doesn't matter if it's during the day or, you know, after hours. Yeah, no, no, I get I get it, Diane, but we wouldn't pay for those repairs even if it was our people because it would be time, it would be materials, right? right? Correct. I mean, that's why we didn't put it in that amount. Right. The amount that Vince gave you does not include the repairs or the time for the repairs. So if we're looking to replace positions, don't you think, do you think it would make sense to know what we're actually replacing? We're not really, we're just, re, I mean, we're taking on new role. I mean, is this what, I'm just confused, but is, is this job description exactly what we're, they're doing now for us? Between the two contracts? Between the two contractors, it, it, it basically kind of outlines what they are doing for us, is my understanding, yes. No, not completely. Right. I didn't know if it because you were saying two different paths too, John. So I just want to make sure we we're covering all the same same things. As we continue to grow and expand the, the water, right? This guy, you know, part of his qualification is going to be to oversee that work on a daily basis that's going on. So so Vince. Yes. What are, what are the credentials that we're looking for? Okay, so those, uh, the minimum qualifications are on here as well. Looking at uh, five years of general construction and municipal experience with at least three years of uh, supervisory experience or lead experience, 
uh, needs a class two uh, water operator's license, high school diploma or equivalent, um, able to operate uh, public works boards, vehicles and equipment, uh, pass a physical and a drug screening. So those are the minimum. Um, who are they going to be accountable to? That's going to supervise them. Uh, and initially, until we phase out the uh, board, it will be the board, and then, um, then it falls on me. We're going to see you. Yep. So what's so what's Tom's role? I mean, right. that's this. Well, Tom's role will will change at that point if we start a you know public works department, and this guy will be the oversight of that department reporting to me. So instead of a public works board, it'll be this public works individual reporting to the town administrator. Um, and that will come off from Tom's plate. Under the description, Vince, was there information under 12 through 15 underneath the duties and responsibilities that were to be included or were they just removed? 12 through 15. Yeah, I think that's just a typo. Okay. Yeah. And then they're talking, they're going to pay this out of the other fund, right? Out of the enterprise yeah. fund or whatever. Yeah, out of the public, yep, yeah, out of the water fund. Yeah, I, I get it's going to be, uh, you know, an enterprise fund um, that's going to pay for this. I guess I'm just, I'm a little nervous about taking on a first, first employee before it's super defined and and I, I'm looking at the the draft here but um, I'm still not I'm not a hundred percent sold that we're we're asking for a management position without any employees how quickly do we plan on ramping up how quickly are we going to ask when are we going to ask for a second employee or a third employee Right. That's again that that would be well for this employee first. Let me back up. This employee they're looking at they would be looking at the board starting to interview in March um, for probably a two or three months period, and then spending that based on uh, who they hire, they would spend the next three months working with the consultants to learn the systems um, and the ins and outs with both those consultants, and then we'd be finished with the consultants and they would take it on um, full time themselves. As far as the second part of your question, when, when would we be looking for another member or whatever? I think that would have to be determined uh, by the board at that time, based on the, um, the planned and scheduled growth. If it continues to grow at a, right. a certain rate and we have more systems in and there's more work going on, um, is there then a need uh, for if and when there is a need, we'd have to bring it back in front of the board to make that decision and determination. Yeah, I think it's going to be pretty quick. Um, but that's just my opinion. So, so I guess, you know, looking at this, our, our fully loaded rate, Diane, for the employee, what do we expect it? What do we expect it to be with Assume the worst for health insurance. What do we expect? I, I've got those numbers. I gave that to Vince. Already, okay. already provided that. So I, um, I guess they're, 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 I'm, I'm looking through the documents. I don't see it. So help me. I out. did not. I did not send that out, but I did anticipate the question. Okay. <laughs> so that, that and Diane had provided the information. So the again the um, the public works board was recommending a, a starting salary of around eighty thousand. So the uh, SSI employer match is 6120. The pension uh, match is 5400. Workers comp is 6040. Health insurance, worst case as you said, the family members of 29000. Disability insurance is another 700. Okay. So all in, all said and done at that rate is 127260. Okay. So just from my little brain here, remind me, what's the value of having this employee <clears throat> eight, rather than having two contractors for only 88,000? What does it get us? So everyone that's listening or watches the video can hear. Oh, I get it. And um, 
that that's the piece that's kind of kind of I don't want to say it's missing, but we we'd have to calculate that. And I can get those numbers. We can figure that out with Diane tomorrow. What we're paying those two contractors above and beyond their contract price. Okay, can I just jump in here real quick, Vince, and correct me if I'm wrong? But out of these two contracts, not not Simon's, but the other contract, the individual that has had that contract, has had it for a number of years and is very familiar with our sewer system and everything that goes on with it. And at this point, I may, I may be misunderstanding, but he's looking into probably retiring in the, the near future. And the knowledge that that individual holds, um, I'm not going to say it's exclusive, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's in a place that we have to get it to somebody to be able to... Uh, to continue service in our systems. Is that correct? Yes. The, uh, he, he is getting to the point where he's going to be looking at retiring um, and we'll, we'll lose that experience and knowledge. That is one, one thing we have to consider as well. Yeah. I think that's the biggest factor on that one contract. I mean, uh, is having somebody that he can mentor or whatever you know, on the town's behalf because there's knowledge there that if it goes, um, we're going to be in not a very good position. What do we have? In, to go along with that, I'd be wondering, I'd wonder what we have uh, in place to uh, make a historical record of all that so that we have that information once. We, we don't have anything in place right now. So that's something we have to consider, and I'll make a note. <laughs> <laughs> Inventory. Maybe. Yep. Yeah, I guess for me, I'll just I'll just say what I'm going to say and then, you know, leave leave with my piece, um, knowing, you know, I'm not running again. So this is really going to be the next board's um, work. But, you know, two things. One is I would make sure that the value is explained to the rate payer. Right. Because right now in my head, it doesn't make sense. Um, and I'm sure I'm sure there's a good reason for it. And even if it's continuity and where we're headed, that sounds like a great reason, but I think it really needs to be documented and well spelled out. This, so I, I will get that. I will get that explanation from uh, the current board chair. He, he, yeah. he does have a little I'm, more. I'm income. sure he does. I'm just, I just want yep. to put it no, out. It's a great request. The, the second piece is when you um, go to interview, I would strongly suggest asking a couple of our neighbors to, to participate, whether it be Northfield and Barry or Montpelier and Waterbury, have a couple of people that already do this on the interview committee to make sure that we get what we're looking for. And it's not just the select board. God love us, but you know we're not experts in this area and we wanna make sure we get the right person out of the gate. That's it. Got it, makes sense. Perfect. And what about maybe a plan? Do we have like a like a five year? Do we have any projections on the department? What it would, what the system's going to need? Well, how we would support it? Any growth of that at all? Or is it just we've kind of taken it as it comes? I, I think there's maybe a two or three, but not out to five yet. Okay. So good work in progress. Anybody else have any comment on this? So what I'll do, Justin, is I'll, I'm going to reach out to the uh, chair of the board again, uh, have a discussion with him and bring up a couple of these issues. Um, and again, the, the, they're anxious to move forward. It's just unfortunate that he couldn't be here. Um, I'll, I'll get some of those. I'll get those answers from him and see when he might be able to come before the board um, mm -hmm. himself. Uh, he can explain it in obviously a lot more detail. He's got the day to day. Uh, on that um, again because their their goal is they would like to start advertising and uh, start talking to people in march so what you know i think with that we'd also want to have a look at the current contracts and see how much overlap we're going to have yep. um because um, you know who knows um i don't know if you even know when they expire or when we have to do something by what the renewal we, provisions we are in there because I do have copies of the contract. Okay, so we have them. We'll just pull and take a look. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Anything else? All right.
next board will have fun with that. Ready for the next movie, you never know. Oh, yeah. Better start working then. So, <laughs> approval of license, permits, vouchers, and applications. Including the liquor license. And, yeah, including the liquor license. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 22 15 for payroll from January 16th, 2022 to January 29th, 2022, paid on February 2nd, 2022, in the amount of $49,190.71. Payable warrant 22G15 with checks 21743 to 21781 in the amount of $182,897.18. Also January reconciled bank statements for the general fund and sewer water checking accounts in the December and January journal entries. Also, we have the liquor licenses for approval and make the motion on all of these. Four of them are second class, Kinney Drugs, number 11, Price Chopper, number 123, Berlin Jolly, number 137. We have first class and third class for Wayside Restaurant. Applebee's is first class and third class. And Maplewood is second class. I would second it. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Gary. Approval of minutes for the meeting of 20th of December, 2021, January 3rd and January 17th, both of 2022. I make the motion that we pend all three of these minutes uh, for review and bring them back to the next meeting, um, specifically for some changes in terms of those who are in attendance. We have some people that were here electronically that we do not have full names for, um, and maybe just a different way of differentiating that. So, so for your, what you're asking is that it be differentiated between who's in attendance physically and virtually? Basically, the way they were presented to us, John, um, there's question marks behind the names of attendees. Got it. Got and it. I'm okay. thinking maybe a different way of presenting that in the minutes. Maybe it could be listed toward the end that these were virtual participants and just um, by first name only. Um, mm -hmm. Something to that nature. I understand what you're saying now. That makes sense. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll make the motion that we amend the minutes, all three of the minutes that were on tonight's agenda, and bring them to next uh, next meeting for approval. I'll second, I'll second that motion. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, we'll get to round table. We'll get to Vince last because he'll have something. <laughs> well, you're, do you have anything for a round table, Tim? Uh, you have to sign that Du Bois invoice that's in there in the purple. Okay. I'll make a note. I'll do that before I leave. Um, John, anything? I'm good. Brad? No, I'm all set. Hey. Justin, I, I actually do have something. Oh, okay. Go ahead, I guess. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I, I think Vince has noticed. Um, I think the police department has noticed. There seems to be a lot of traffic parking right in front of the no parking signs on the probably the worst part of Brookfield Road. Irish Hill. Um, Dealing with it daily. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. The answer to the question is yes, we have noticed. And I'm trying to, I don't know why that's happening because in past years it hasn't. Nothing has changed as far as being able to drive up in there and park. Um, but I'm certainly interested in your guys' perspective on what's going on there and how we fix it. Because uh, 
on multiple occasions, I hear from people that are walking by about how, you know, dangerous it seems. And I, I see people parking there and carrying their skis up and putting them on in the parking lot and skiing up, you know, up, yep. up the trail. So I'm really confused on why it's happening and you probably don't have a good answer. Um, and I certainly don't want to ticket people for trying to, you know, get out and recreate on our trails, but uh, we got to do something. And it wasn't a problem before. So um, I'm interested in your guys' opinions on as far as what's going on. Well, I, I can speak to that a little bit. And I, I agree with you. I, I'm not sure what's changed. Uh, you know, the fact is that, you know, the, the town's never plowed that. It used to be done. I understand if it was done, it was done by some volunteer just on their own and nobody knows who or when or what or why. Um, but not, nothing's changed there. Um, the, there was a Subaru parked up in there earlier today and a pickup parked on the road, a four-wheel drive pickup. So, hmm. I mean, why didn't he drive up in there? I don't know. Um, I will tell you we won't have this problem next year because – I do have the signed agreement from Montpelier to put the parking in. So um, that will be installed uh, sometime next summer. Uh, we'll get it on the schedule and we'll get that built. So there will be parking up there um, and that problem will go away after this winter. All right. Well, I, I hope so. What do we do for the winter? I don't know. Keep putting notes on there to move your vehicle or, or get a ticket. If you offend it, you know, do a second offense. I'm, I know when speaking to some of the officers, John, they've been – they keep record of it. So if it's a second time, they they were going to start issuing tickets. The first time was a warning. Second time was a ticket. Um, yeah. Same thing's happening on Crosstown now, actually. The Boyer Forest over there, there was somebody parked on the inside of the corner over there today. This morning when it came to work, somebody went over and plowed the, plowed the parking area out so they, get, they were getting off the road. Yeah. Uh, but I guess... Yeah, I guess I I'm thinking it's more people out doing recreational stuff since everything else in this world. It seems to be that that part of yeah. the recreational I mean, of everything is picked up. So maybe it's new people that are so much. I like your, to it. Yeah, I like your thinking, but I'm not buying it because I think no. in 2020 we had the we had the you know everyone staying home looking to get out and do something. Um, yeah. But well, we get that, out my skis. So that being said, I just. I just want the problem to be fixed before someone gets hurt. I'm not looking for anyone to get ticketed or anything like that. Everyone's trying to have fun, but um, there's something strange about why people are parking on the road all of a sudden. I don't, I don't get it. Should we, should we ask either the conservation committee or the rec board to look at that for us and figure it out? Maybe like, well, following? yeah, I guess the reason I bring it up is this is definitely not a snow machine issue. There's no snow machine trailers. There's nothing like that here. I see the people all the time. They're skiers, they're walkers. It's everyone else. And there's plenty of parking. So it's mm -hmm. definitely not a snow machine issue. Um, and I don't want, you know, it to be conveyed as that because it's certainly not. It's very clear it's not. Um, you know, whether it's placement of signs or, or whatever it is, I just, I wanted to highlight it for the board as, you know, something to watch in the future as, you know, I won't be here. Thank you. Uh, Dave, did you have anything? No, I'm good. Well, same. I'm good. I'm good. There you go, buddy. Take the floor. All I've got is um, I need signatures, right? We need more signatures on the liquor licenses Yep. Um, that we need to get and on the yes, Ellen Sulik letter. Okay. And how from, about the next the meeting? The next meeting? Is that falls on a holiday? Yeah. No. Yeah. It's the 21st is actually uh, canceled. That's going to be our, well, that's also mm -hmm. what we scheduled for our pre uh, town meeting oh. on the 21st. So it'll be, be difficult to change that because it's also in the town report. So, oh, yeah. Which please pick up your copy on the way out if you like. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I don't really. I, how do you guys feel about it? It's President's Day. I know probably yeah. President's Weekend. Um, we can join virtually. So my feeling is just do it anyways. Just mm -hmm. do the meeting. But. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, well. I feel we need to. It's published and. 
Okay. So, anything else? No, signatures. That's all. You don't want to remind us again? I'd love to. Yeah, sure. Do don't forget to, to sign. Oh, okay. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and for those of you that are virtual, if, um, except for you, maybe, Mr. Sawyer, I'm happy to bring the documents out or around if, if need be, if that's easier for you guys. I'll leave my truck unlocked for you tonight. Okay. I'll drop them off tonight and pick them up uh, on the way through in the morning. Sounds good. Okay. Um, Thank you, John. We don't have any executive session to do events. No, not tonight. Entertain a motion to adjourn. I make the motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.